All right, hey, welcome everybody. We got, uh, you know, a good number of us on. And I'm gonna open up for some Q&A um, after a few minutes. And I just sent an email out reminding um, other folks that uh, we're on for our uh, BSB University call. So a couple of things. Um, what I wanna do on this call every time is I'll probably do five or 10 minutes of what we're doing right now that's working for various clients. Um, and you know everything from kind of old school stuff to new stuff that we're doing with Facebook or or online uh, lead gen, all that kind of thing. And uh, I know you know everybody's at different places here, uh, so you know some you know maybe just getting the writing process started, others books completed, launched already, bestsellers now. What to do? Doesn't matter. Um, we'll have a, a Q and A time. Um, in 10 or 15 minutes and then open it up for any questions that you guys have. You're just going to please type those in the chat box so that I can see what they are and then I can pick, uh, you know, two or three of those and answer them and go about it. So um, to begin, I'll start with a question. How would you like to uh, get yourself, your business, your products, your services, or your books in front of 3 million people or more in just one shot and uh, that's what uh, we were able to do with a client just this week which is pretty cool um, one of our clients uh, Steve Ozanich was on the Howard Stern show uh, just a couple of days ago and um, I'm trying to be conservative Howard says he has 20 million listeners uh, but you know conservatively three to five maybe 10 million listeners Obviously, you know, one of the biggest national, even international um, sources, uh, you know, media opportunities. And as you guys know, we have clients on TV, radio, et cetera, every single week. So how do we do that? How do you do that on an ongoing basis? So I'll give you some examples. These are new books, or some of them are older books that we've done. This is a, a new book that we're launching for Taki Moore. He's uh, one of the top uh, business coaches in Australia. Uh, Robin Webb, we did her book, Skinny Chick, uh, maybe a year or so ago. I just picked a couple of different ones off my uh, bookshelf there, and we did a book, Help Perry Marshall, with some PR for his book, Evolution 2.0. So let's say that Perry or Robin or Taki wanted on an ongoing basis to get opportunities. Uh, in Taki's case, it might be opportunities for speaking engagements so that he could be in front of uh, coaches, consultants, people that would be interested in buying his services or hiring him as a consultant. In Robin's case, it would be the same, but for people that are looking for fitness help or weight loss or that kind of thing with Perry's, it's more he's looking for something along the lines of PR. So a really simple strategy that we highly, highly recommend, and in fact, I talk about this a lot and I'm always disappointed in the number of authors that follow through with this. But one of the strategies that we highly recommend is for you to first and foremost, there are just you know, three basic steps. First and foremost, to outline a uh, hundred either ideal clients, uh, speaking engagements, PR opportunities, corporations, et cetera, but a hundred names, telephone numbers, addresses of these ideal perfect partners that you would like to have promote you or get in front of their audience or have an opportunity to, to speak for them. Outline 100 of them, and that might take a little bit of time. You'll have to do a little bit of research, but there are some tools even in the BSP University back office uh, and, and certainly Google, just Google searches for these kinds of things. Number one, outline. Number two, every single week, um, have a strategy to send out a minimum of three uh, up to as many as five books. And I'm talking the actual physical version of your book. Now, if your book's not done, it's fine. Uh, this is something that you want to take note of for the future. But send out, you know, three to five books every single week with a personal note. I mean, you know, old school handwritten note, maybe a nice card or something to the individual that you want to get the book in front of. So if it's a conference, you would want it to go to the conference organizer. If it's an association, you would want it to go to maybe the president uh, of the association or maybe somebody that is in charge of, you know, uh, doing webinars for the association or creating content for the association. If it's a PR uh, type <laughs> that you're looking for, 
then that could be something like, um, you know, a producer of a television show or a radio show or a podcast, etc. And you're going to send it to them with a nice handwritten uh, note. Um, you can also have attached to that something uh, which you'll also find in the a BSP back office like a speaker one sheet if you're looking for speaking engagements as well as maybe something just kind of introducing yourself and talking about your various accolades like you're a best-selling author you've been featured on ABC NBC CBS you've spoken at these venues etc and you're gonna send that out five a week it's not expensive to do that you can print any of these books for three to four dollars on your account in create space you can ship it for a dollar and then send it out when you do this consistently and you also follow up step three follow up with a telephone call more than likely you're going to get the gatekeeper in that instance but if you follow up with a telephone call or have an assistant follow up with a telephone call just again as an introduction seeing if your assistant can get you an appointment to have a brief conversation with that individual then this is going to do amazing things for you and your business. It's gonna do great things for you as far as PR. It's gonna do cool things for you as far as getting speaking opportunities. It's gonna put you in front of your ideal clients over and over again. So that is how we were able to help uh, Steve Ozanich get on uh, Howard Stern. Um, Howard talked about Steve uh, for five minutes, not because Steve was a guest on Howard Stern, but in this case, because we set books to Howard and because Howard opened the books and talked about Steve and talked about Howard's back problems and how Steve's mentor was able to help Howard. And so we were able to make that connection from that Steve's, all of Steve's books, he has five or six, have done extremely well. All of them have gone to bestseller because people are buying them all. He's been contacted numerous times via email and social media for people looking for his direct help. And that is just from one single appearance. When you do this over and over and over again, and you set up a system to do this, then your business is going to grow. And it's going to seem as though it's happening, happening magically or an autopilot, but it's because you are systematically doing this Again, something very inexpensive and something very simple. Now, there's other things that you can do, but this is something that you should never, never, never neglect doing because it is super, super powerful. So I hope that makes sense and is helpful. That's just kind of a 10-minute tip to start our, uh, or eight minutes as it is, uh, to start our, uh, our BSP um, coaching call. And I want to open it up to anybody that has any questions. Do me a favor, type your question in the, in the chat box. Uh, that way I can read it. And then from there, I'll go ahead and unmute you and we can chat about it. All of this is being recorded. All of this will be in the uh, membership area as well as on the Facebook page. So any questions that you have, please start writing them up now. Type them in the question box and we'll begin answering them. So Ed is asking, I have two questions. Both of my books in audio format hit number 88 on the Amazon Top 100. Can I effectively claim to be an Amazon bestseller or do I need to be in the top 10? Number two, do you have a contact for KTLA, KTLA in LA as they're not listed in your contacts? Ed from Oxnard. Hey, Ed, how you doing? Um, so, you know, the, the short version is I personally – I mean, if you know us with Best Seller Publishing, we always guarantee top 10, and that's kind of where most bestseller lists fall on. So I would, you know, number 88 is certainly uh, an accomplishment, and especially doing that in audio format, which I think is pretty cool. But I would go through the launch sequence if you haven't already done that, and, and make sure you get your book launched because then you'll absolutely hit top 10 and more than likely you'll hit number one in multiple categories and even multiple countries. So if you follow through on the launch sequence, you'll do that. As far as a contact for KTLA in Los Angeles, I'm sure we have that. Uh, we're in LA as well, as I know you're, you're not far in Oxnard. So if it's not in our uh, list, then no problem, we can do a search incision and get that for you. So I'll make a note here. Why don't you type in your email address, Ed, so I have that, and uh, I'll have Michelle or Alana, my publicist, get back to you uh, with um, that information, shoot you an email or, or whatever. Uh, Ed, I can unmute you as well. Um, if you have something specific 
that you wanted to ask besides that, or if that answer is enough for you, then great. Uh, if there's something else you want to talk about in that regard, then I've unmuted you. And so you, uh, you're live here if you want to ask oh. something else. Okay. Can you hear me? I got gotcha. you. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I was, was thinking my books are on dealing, and I have my second book is on dealing with skin. That might be really good for the KTLA morning show and their talk format and the popular thing. Um, you know, Ed, you were cutting out, um, so I, I couldn't quite make it out, but I heard the end, and it, sound, you're, it sounds like your internet may be lagging or something, but from what I heard, it sounds like you feel like your, your content could be good for the KTLA morning show. Yes. Um, you know, they're they're going to be the ones to determine that, but again, in the, back, in the membership area, there's going to be um, a lot of training on how you put your segment proposal together. Okay. Um, and it's because you want to have all your ducks in a row there. You want to have a great segment proposal. You want to have a great hook. And when you reach out to them, you know, you, you want to show up as an expert. See, they, they need to, they need, that producer needs to check the box. And, and there's a series of boxes that they're checking. The first box that they're checking is, are you credible? So they want to know, and your best selling book is the proof that you're credible. That's the first check of the box. The second check is, are you prepared? And are you prepared is not just to show up and answer questions because the talent never is, is there to think of questions for you. So your segment proposal that you're going to send to them is going to have everything completely spelled out so that all they have to do is show up and perform. You've already given them everything they need to um, to have a great three to five minute segment with you on TV. So when you check these boxes and you show up that way in front of these producers, then you're going to get their attention because most people don't do that. Most people are not best-selling authors. Most people just send a, an email or make a telephone call and, and try the old-fashioned way of just, you know, 100 contacts and I'll get a good one. But if you show up powerfully with these boxes checked, then you'll have a much higher likelihood of, of getting a good um, a good segment. The only th other thing that I'd mention there is LA is the, I think, number two market in the country. It's a massive market. So that would do really good for your book. But if you haven't done any before, and I don't know if you have or haven't, then I would also recommend start reaching out to some smaller markets. Uh, Santa Barbara is a great market. It's a little smaller, but yeah. they're always looking for great content. We have um, we have clients on TV in Santa Barbara all the time. San Diego was my very first TV appearance. That's like a top 20 market in the U.S. I think it's like 3 million. So I would, I would reach out to them as well. In other words, don't just go to these giant markets and, and, and try to land, you know, the big 800-pound uh, marlin. Like, you know, getting a 50-pound wahoo is pretty cool too. So, so I, would, I would start, you know, uh, put out quite a few lines in the water, so to speak, and uh, and start in some of the smaller markets too. Is that helpful? Thank you. All right, my friend. Thank you. All right. So let me mute you there. Great. So uh, Skylar is asking, I heard Amazon is going to start a program to advertise your book. What do you think about that? I think it's fantastic. Um, you know, I've heard the same thing, and I actually, just like 10 minutes ago, I was um, with my uh, tech, uh, director of technology, Steve, who helps with our book launches, and we were going through one of our clients' launches that's happening right now, and uh, her book is, you know, number one in multiple countries, uh, international bestseller, very cool. And as he was clicking through, I noticed a link in um, her Kindle account, because we were in her account that said click here to advertise on Amazon. And I was like, whoa, I hadn't seen that before. So I think they may have already rolled that out. I, I don't know for sure, but I am gonna make a note here and I am gonna check on that. If they have rolled that out or if they have it, Skylar, that's, you know, that's a great way, um, especially at the beginning of a program for you to get your book in front of the right people. I mean, I am sure that Amazon's gonna give it a lot of love. And, and what I mean by that is they're, you know, gonna give it some extra, you know, kind of, um, you know, uh, Amazon SEO juice, if you will. In other words, they'll, you know, they'll make it very worthwhile because they want the program to be successful. It's very successful, by the way, right now when it comes to Amazon products. So, you know, 
it, it will, I'm certain, uh, be successful when it comes to the books as well. So short answer, yes, and long answer is we're going to look into it. I just saw it for the first time 10 minutes ago in someone's account, and I really think that, um, you know, that it, it, it could be a game changer for, for a lot of people on an ongoing basis to get their books sold. So I can't wait to test that. If you have another question, Skylar, type it in there. You say, Skylar's also saying, I think so too, unless you can create it organically. Well, we do both. We want to do both. But, you know, like for example, with, uh, with any media, you know, with any opportunity uh, search engine, say Google, Facebook, et cetera, and Amazon is nothing more than a buyer search engine, you're going to get organic love, right? I mean, you're, you're going to get you know, when we do a book launch or when you're going to launch your book on your own, you're going to go through the steps as we talk about it. You're going to get Amazon verified reviews, which gives you a lot of love on Amazon. You're going to do the whole book launch like we shared. Because of that, Amazon is going to give you a lot of love for your keywords and organically people are going to, you know, as they're typing, they're going to find your material. However, and the same is true with, with Google uh, as well as Facebook. Like if you're building your own page or, you know, your, your friends list, et cetera. But if you can also put a dollar in the advertising machine and get $2 back, now you have the ability to scale your business and to do some things that no one else can do. We spend as much as $1,500 a day on Facebook advertising. And I could spend more with Facebook, but we just can't handle the leads. In fact, I just got an email from somebody today that she was upset and felt like we were unprofessional because we didn't, you know, we didn't show up for the, the sales call, the strategy session call. Of course, I feel like, ah, you know, I mean, I'm paying money to get these calls for these strategy session calls for, you know, my project managers. And for whatever reason, we didn't show up to one. And, and oftentimes that's because we're getting 15, 20 of them a day. So, but that we do that and spend that money because we're able to make a significant return on our, our investment. So I believe that you're going to see that same opportunity with, uh, with Amazon when it comes to the, uh, um, you know, the Amazon pay-per-click. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any other questions there, go ahead and type them in and I'll feel free. I'll, uh, I'll answer it as we go through. Uh, let's see here. Shirley Ann. To everyone, just getting to the PR stage. Hey, Shirley, how are you? I didn't know it was Shirley Ann, by the way. Uh, just getting to the PR stage, where do you suggest we target for the first interviews? I'm interested in TV. Thrilled with the book and its results so far. Congratulations. I'm, I'm super honored to, uh, to be able to work with you on the project and, and help you with it. You know, I mean, it's done really, really well. I mean, it is, you know, I think the first day we got like 2,700 downloads the first day something like that. So super excited. Why don't I mute you and then we can have a conversation about this as well. Uh, yeah, Shirley, definitely. can you hear me? Yeah, I can absolutely hear you. Yeah, thanks for everything. I was kind of blown away by the results. So I was uh, actually uh, a little shell-shocked and Mark came home. He's like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm, I'm so happy for you. Really excited. Love your hat too. It must be cold where you are. <laughs> yeah, upstate New York here. I'm, a, I'm inside with a hat on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So, so where should you target for PR? Let's talk about that for a few moments. And, and, and some of the same thing is going to apply, as I said to Ed. And that is, you know, when we do a, a PR campaign, we're, we're thinking two things. One is we're thinking to try to get, you know, a, a wide um, a array of PR for you. Uh, when it comes to TV and radio, like mass media, what you get with mass media, unless you, it, especially if you don't have a mass media appeal offer, and we can talk about your offer, but what you get with mass media is great credibility, you get attention and a lot of eyeballs, but you don't also often get a lot of sales, okay? Sometimes you do, but not often. And the reason that is is because with mass media, unless your offer is appealing directly to that very, very large audience, then people are interested, but they're not going to take the extra step to buy. Now, in your case, and maybe you could even share what your book is if you want and all of that and share a little bit about your offer, I think yours probably does – will appeal to a good size audience. Give me your thoughts there. 
Yeah, no, the book um, for others is um, Healthy, Lean, and Sexy at Any Age. And um, I've done a couple of podcasts and those have gone, you know, real well. I have an offer of a, you know, an e-download for the book. I have an offer of a PDF for six ways to whittle your waist. And then I have, you know, what you would call your strategy call. And I have a healthy me, you know, strategy session um, that's laid out on a lead page and, um, you know, has a clickable link. So that's all, that's all set up. Good. Yeah, I think your offer does and should appeal to a, a larger audience like radio, TV, etc. We still love podcasts and blogs and narrow media because oftentimes when I do a podcast, I'll make a significant amount of sales from a very narrow podcast as compared to TV. Generally, people, you know, they don't get started with me because of TV. But it does give me credibility. In your case, that may that may be different because your offer is about being fit and healthy. And of course, we're coming into the new year. So first thing to do, and I know I think you're are you working with Alana or Michelle, or has that been determined yet? I, I haven't heard yet. I just okayed the back cover and so I, I haven't heard what the next steps are. Okay. Um, you'll get an email, but the next steps, you know, we don't, we don't do the uh, PR launch until we get the physical copies of the book in. So I know the physical copies aren't in yet. All that's still happening. Yeah, they're, they were shipped today. Terrific. So um, then we'll, uh, we'll take you through a process. They'll send you an email with step-by-step. Step. First thing we have to do is create your segment proposal. They'll talk about the different media opportunities for you. As far as TV goes, and I think you've done some TV before, but maybe not any major media. Not, not really anything major. No, I, I had personally a radio show for a lot of years. I've done a lot of radio and a lot of podcasts. Yeah. Okay. So similar situation to Ed. First of all, what we're going to do with the media isn't by any means going to be the last media that you get. So what we're going to try to do is lay a foundation, right? So uh, Alana or Michelle, whichever one worked directly with you, they're going to get on the telephone. You know, they're going to get your segment proposal done and they're going to start pitching you know, our, our producers all over the country, depending on what you're willing to do travel wise. We okay. have, we have them all over for TV, radio, et cetera. Um, some good size markets, but more than likely, I mean, media loves media. So more than likely what you're going to find is, you know, for any big markets like Los Angeles or like New York, uh, you know, on the big stations like ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, they're going to want to see that you have already been on TV, that you're not going to implode, that you're good, all those things that I already know about you, but right. they don't know about you. Okay. They're going to want to see some examples of that before, you know, a, a bigger opportunities. Come when mm -hmm. it comes to that. So we have to lay a foundation first. What you're going to want to do on a long-term basis is exactly what I talked about at the beginning of this, and that you're going to want to have a system created for, uh, for yourself or a virtual assistant where you're doing this, you know, sending out your, your version of this every single week to producers, to joint venture partners, to associations if you want to do speaking engagements, to conferences, so that you can continually use your book as, you know, your expert credibility source. And okay. let that go in front of you to prove that you really are an expert in the space. So, you know, I, I'm giving you kind of the broad, you know, shotgun approach here. But Alana and Michelle will help you directly. I, I'd say we're going to start in the smaller markets. We do have contacts in L.A., in New York, you know, Philly, Maryland, D.C. area. And I think this, this kind of content um, they're going to be very interested in because it's evergreen. They're always interested in, you know, getting healthy, getting fit, because that's, that's what their, their viewers are interested in as well. All right, cool. and I just want to say one thing to what you spoke to earlier. I did get an email just 10 minutes ago. Increase your ebook sales. This is from Amazon. And reach new readers with Amazon Marketing Services. Get started. Um, so that oh, has cool. been sent to me today. So I'll, yeah, I'll check great. it out. Yeah, we're going to do the same. Um, in fact, probably next week. Um, that's That will be maybe our 10-minute um, discussion because we'll take the next week and we'll start doing some research and diving into it and figuring it out. So cool. I'm pretty right. excited about it. Literally 10 minutes before this, I just saw it. So yeah, yeah, me cool. too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank all you, right. Rob. Thank you You're for welcome. Me. Congrats again on all the success. Thank you. Beautiful. So I muted you there. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the questions. 
So Vanessa is asking, um, is the 99 cent phase just about getting reviews and how long do you suggest? A week, 10 days, two weeks, et cetera. So uh, Vanessa, I can unmute you uh, and I am happy to answer that question as well. Vanessa, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear okay, me? Okay, great. Yep. Hi. Um, good to see you again. Saw you last week. Mm -hmm. So short version is yes. The 99 cent phase is temporary. Um, it can be seven days, it can be 10 days, it can be two weeks, but what's most important is that it is a limited time frame and that you let your friends, family, associates, um, past clients, social media following, et cetera, let them know, you know that it is limited. So you're gonna wanna, and you'll see this in the, in the training, you're gonna wanna let them know, um, you know let's say you're reaching out uh, to someone via Facebook message you always want to do that on a personal basis, right? You want to engage mm -hmm. with them personally. So you say something like, you know, hi, Vanessa, you know, haven't seen you since, you know, Halloween, you know, when you dressed up as a goblin and blah, blah, blah. And that was really funny. Hey, listen, you, you may or may not know, but, um, you know, I just launched my, my book. It's doing really well, but it would really mean a lot to me if you would uh, check out the book and offer a review. What I've done is I've lowered the price just for the next week or two to 99 cents. That way you don't have to pay retail for it. Uh, so please download it now and then please offer me a review. Um, you can, like an advanced tactic, which is always helpful, is you can tell them how to give you a review as well because somebody may see a book like this, like Perry Marshall's book, which is holy cow, super thick and, you know, 300 plus pages and go, there's no way I'm reading this book to give a review, right? Even his mom isn't going to read it and give him a review. So what do you do? Well, you can tell him, look, I know the book is 150 pages or 175, but do me a favor. Just pick out one or two chapters in the table of contents that you feel like speak to you. Read those and then offer the review on those particular chapters. That way you can kind of, you know, take them off the hook of having to read your entire book and yet you still get what you want. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. What I was curious about is, so, you know, is it just about like, so say I already have 10 reviews that are five stars and good reviews. Do I need to still do the 99 cent? Like, do I need, do I want to put that out to my Facebook group to have as many people downloading as possible to get my download numbers up? Or is it just to get the reviews? Well, it's both. I mean, if you get your download numbers up as well during your launch, you'll become a hot new release and a top rated book. So those you know, like Taki's book right now is a hot, hot new release and a top rated book just from the review phase. So, and that gives him more Amazon love and that positions him as the number one hot new release in this category. So, so that is an important aspect of it as well. But so would you think longer two weeks is better before you do the free week? Um, you know, it, it all depends on how quickly you can get the reviews. I wouldn't stop at 10. Um, what we tell our clients is we're going to get you 10 and then launch the book. But many of our clients, you know, with our help and their, their um, own network have mm -hmm. gotten 60, 80, 100 plus reviews, which yeah. is more reviews than a New York Times bestseller would get in the first week or two. So, you know, the more you can get, the better. And if you have a, a good size audience and you're willing to just put a little elbow grease in to like reach out to them personally, then you'll get, you'll get a great response. And the faster you do that, the better. So, I, but you know, it, it, again, if your audience is, if you just want to get it launched as quickly as possible, 10 is enough. And mm -hmm. if your audience is a good enough size, don't stop there. You know, get 20, get 30. That's, okay. that's so, impressive. So it'd be better to do maybe two weeks. Yep. Nothing okay. with two weeks. Absolutely. In fact, you can go as long as a month. Um, from the, from the day you push the button and launch your book, you have 30 days to hit hot new release or top rated book. And okay. so in those 30 days, you know, you continue, you know, I mean, we don't always do it 30, but you can go that long in those 30, you can continue to get reviews and continue to focus on the 99 cent before you go into the full launch. Okay. Um, which brings me to my other question. So last week I was like, I put out my physical book before my ebook, and the um, truth of the matter is the date is November 2nd. Right. November so, 2nd is when you push the button. 
That's when I pushed the button for the physical book, but I didn't really launch it, launch it. I actually took it down and did more yeah. edits to it and all this, but it, that's what it says. I then called because you said whatever the date is, is the date. Yeah. So I'm curious about what to do about relaunching. If I miss that window, what can I do? You, you did not um, miss the window. So, I mean, you still have time, but, uh, and we're, we're not talking about becoming a bestseller. You can do that a year after you launch your book. So don't worry about that. What we're talking about is Amazon hot new release and Amazon top rated book. Okay. Which, you know, you, it, it's give or take. I mean, you know, if you can do it, fantastic. If, if, if you don't, then you're, you're not going to lose any potential credibility by going through the rest of the launch process. It's like an added benefit. Uh, Amazon yeah. gives you added love, basically. Okay. They, they, they position you. If you went into like coaching right now, you'd see Taki's book is the number one hot new release in coaching. It'll be a top rated book soon too, but all the reviews haven't come in yet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have still another week or two or something like that, a week anyway. And so if you give it good attention and get as many. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It was, it was August 2nd. Oh, August 2nd. I, yeah, I, missed, I missed, missed that window <laughs> okay. completely. But yeah. that said, I called because I was like, how can that start the same? Because I don't have an ebook. Like, I'm about to launch my ebook. It's the same book as my physical book. Yeah. How, if it's, how can the Kindle clock start ticking if I don't actually have the book on Kindle? So yeah. I called them and they said that they don't, it isn't connected. It's not. Okay, well, it's not but until I, I don't it know for sure. I, I don't want to like hit the go button and not feel ready just to yeah. find out. So I haven't done it yet because I, I want to do it more in. in yeah. this. Well, in one sense, you have nothing to lose. So, you know, if you, if you hit the button and you're ready and then you bust out and get a, get a lot of new reviews, uh, eventually you'll want your Kindle and your, your paperback to be connected. Um, sometimes people leave them separated, but you really want them to be connected because you want it to be if someone searches the paperback and finds it and decides to buy the, the um, uh, digital version also, you want those things to be connected. You don't want them to go through a whole nother search. So mm -hmm. maybe that's what they meant when you called Amazon on the telephone. They meant that initially they're not connected and that is true but you do want to have those two things connected. I think it is, but, but what they were saying is they, uh, the create space sends the information to Kindle, but they're not really working together beyond that. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I guess, I mean, that, that sounds kind of odd to me because, you know, again, it's, it's one page. Ultimately it's one page that people can buy anything from. They can buy the audio book. They can buy the physical soft cover. They can buy the digital so, you know, what, that's what we want. You know, we want one place for people to go to where they can buy anything from you. Uh, again, initially, those two things are not connected, but eventually they, they do get connected because Amazon owns both companies. I think it might just be that the ebook has a different release date than the physical book. You know, I've never seen that. So it's possible, but I can tell well, you that's this. That's what they were leading me to believe. Cause I was like, really stressed out. I was like, I'm missing my opportunity. And they're like, no, <laughs> no don't worry. They were like, we don't, it, it's just, you know, we're not that right. connected. Yeah. But, um, it sounds so like they were trying to get you off the line, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so how, how does one relaunch a book? Is that just take the opportunity every 90 days to go through the same processes as you did in the beginning or? Um, yes, short version. Uh, but let, let me finish the last question. Okay. Just like last point on it. It doesn't matter one way or another. It really doesn't matter um, because you still want as many reviews as you can get, right? Yes. And if you have 10 or so now and you can get another 10 or 20, then lay the groundwork, lay the seed, do that and, and, and do that for the next couple of weeks, whether or not it's considered, I mean, whenever you push the button, mm -hmm. whether or not it's considered a new release, doesn't matter. You know, you're still going to get all the love you need by launching it to be a bestseller. So mm -hmm. anyway, um, to answer your second question. So um, we do recommend launching your book more than one time a year. Uh, that's really helpful. We do that 
with, with my books, but we do that with my books more because we're always testing. So we're testing new websites to advertise on uh, so we can bring you guys this, you know, so we can bring this information to you so that for our done for you clients, we always have the best sites because oftentimes sites go offline. Like one of our best ones used to be Pixel of Ink. It was gigantic. And, and they totally went offline. I guess they couldn't monetize it. So they, you know, they used to drive hundreds of thousands of visitors and then now nothing. So we're always testing new ones. Uh, for yourself, though, you always want to keep your stuff in the spotlight because it will lead to new opportunities. So, you know, uh, KDP allows you to do um, a promo launch every 90 days. That's overkill. You don't need to do it that much. But I say a couple times a year. And you're always going to get a new influx of buyers. You're going to get a new influx of leads and, and new opportunities. Plus, you'll just get more and more and more reviews, which is cool, too. Okay, fantastic. Cool. Thanks for your question. Thanks Great for questions. Yeah. All right, let's see what else we have here. Uh, that was Vanessa. I just muted you. Um, let's see. Lou. Hey, Lou, how are you, my friend? Again, as we approach the holiday season, is there an ideal time of the year for a book launch? I'll go ahead and unmute you, but that is a fast answer. So hang on one second. All right, Lou. So um, short answer, but I mean, it may lead to some other questions for you. Short answer is um, there's, no, there's no like broad ideal time of the year for a book launch. Obviously, for certain genres and categories, there are better times, but all times are good. So obviously, anything having to do with fitness or health, uh, you know, something that New Year's resolution stuff, um, end of the year, beginning of the year, I mean, just explosive, fantastic time. Uh, so anything that's kind of, um, you know, aspirational and, and looking towards growth in the future is, is always good. Otherwise, we just try to avoid the major holidays during a book launch. We're not going to launch Christmas. We're not going to launch on New Year's. We're not going to launch Thanksgiving, but we'll launch the week before. We'll launch the week after. Doesn't affect, um, you know, book sales at all. Gotcha. That was my question, just because I think we were slated to, to go right before Christmas. Yeah. Um, this December 15th or something like that. I didn't know if it mattered if you were doing it before or after, but yeah, no impact. Holidays are a great time because people are, you know, they have downtime. They're going to read, you know, it, it's a good time for them to, you know, have some content that they can engage with. So, but there's, there's no better or worse time, you know, other than just staying away from those major holidays. Spectacular. Thanks, man. All right, my friend. Okay, let's look at what else we have here. Great questions, by the way, everybody. Uh, Shirley, is there a place to track my downloads today? Uh, short answer, Shirley, absolutely. You can go into your KDP back office. Um, if you don't know how to do that, um, there, is a, there should be a training uh, in the back office area, but I can make a note of that, and we can do like a quick uh, screen share and have that in the uh, BSP back office area. And we can even put it in the Facebook group for you. So, um, you know, basically how to, how to search downloads. Yeah, that'll be fun for you since you had 2,700 downloads on the first day. <laughs> so we'll, we'll do a quick uh, screen share video on that and we'll put that in the, uh, in the Facebook group for everybody. So fantastic, good. Uh, let's see, Jessica, do you have any tips for coming up with a subtitle for a travel book? The title I was thinking of is The Ultimate Guide to Traveling Your Way. Uh, cool. Um, you know, I, I probably want to spend a little bit more time thinking, but here's how we do it. Uh, and there's a pretty extensive training in the uh, back office on all of this. So um, first thing we always want to do is we always want to go through the author market questionnaire and really consider who our ideal reader is. What are their fears? What are their frustrations? What are their wants? What are their aspirations? So just really quick, when, when it comes to travel, I don't like to travel. Um, personally, I like being there. I don't like getting there. So maybe I'm weird. Maybe other people like getting there. But so I think what are, you know, you want to think through what are the frustrations of a traveler? right? Well, frustrations may have to do with, you know, um, making airline reservations or picking up rental cars or waiting in long lines. 
uh, you know, the, um, the uh, fears may be that if you're booking travel or if you're booking like, you know, uh, I went to Hawaii recently and um, on that Hawaii trip, some friends of ours booked a, um, a home, a, a rental home uh, overlooking the ocean. The problem with that rental home was that it might have been a scam. Now, we found out ultimately that it wasn't, but they basically took $5,500 and then they lost all contact with my friends. And so my friends were like, this is a scam. They took our money. And it was like a week before we were supposed to go to Hawaii. My wife and I and our family had our own rental house on the ocean. and They were getting their own, um, just for the two of them, a condo. Anyway, long story short, um, you know, they ended up having to book another place and spend money on that and then fight to get their $5,500 deposit back. So that is a, wow, I mean, you know, that's a fear. Like, are you going to lose money? Point being is when you go through the author market questionnaire, you start getting into the mind of your prospect. And that's what you want to do. You, you want to communicate them in, to them in a subtitle that gets into their head. So what I would say about the ultimate guide to traveling your way is that it's a little general, it's a little broad. And so you would want to speak, you know, maybe to both the positive aspirational, as well as the negative fear of that potential uh, traveler, right? What are the things that they're frustrated with or afraid of? What are the things that they want in travel and aspire to? And, and you'll have to make a benefit list. You know, I'm going to cover this in the book and this in the book and this in the book. And then you want to pick the best few and use that in the subtitle. Anyway, that's a broad answer. Um, I'll, I'll unmute you just in case you have any further questionnaire. Um, you're unmuted, Jessica. Tell me, does that make sense? Is that helpful? Yeah, that makes sense. So have you done the author market questionnaire? No. No, I'd go through that and do it. Um, because it'll help you with really thinking through how to get into the mind of the prospect. Four things, fears, frustrations, wants, and aspirations. And they're all different. And just, just pretend you're that traveler and start thinking like them. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Good. Any, any follow-up question or anything? Well, I was thinking about um, possibly launching it in May. Do you think that would be a good time, like before the summer travel starts? I think that's great. We've done... We've done a couple of really successful travel books. One was um, a travel book we did for uh, Spring Breakers. And uh, he's, he owns a big um, Spring Break travel company in uh, Texas, which I know there's a lot of Spring Break there. And that's when his book launched and it was wildly successful. And so, you know, I, I think that that is a fantastic time. Again, no bad time because people want to travel around the holidays. People want to travel in the summer. Travel is, is evergreen, but that's certainly a good time. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. All right. You're welcome. Good question. Thanks for asking. So, uh, Dr. Val, hi, Rob. What makes one a bestseller? What happens? Okay, great. Hey, Dr. Val, how are you? So, I get this question asked um, a lot with people initially that um, get to know what we do at Bestseller Publishing. And the simple answer to that question is your large publishing houses and independent media sources like Wall Street Journal, New York Times, USA Today, Amazon, etc., will compile a list based on what their criteria is, and that's different for each one of these places, and then use that criteria to determine if someone is a bestseller. So um, Wall Street Journal and New York Times have gotten a lot of hate recently over the last year or so because more and more people, and, and Bill O'Reilly on the Fox News Channel has made it a point to talk about this um, at somewhat regular intervals uh, because he's been on kind of the other end of the sword. And that is, um, they are not a pure list of like downloads or book sales. Um, the New York Times and Wall Street Journal are more a curated list. And what I mean by that is they're a selection committee. So just because a book is outselling even every other book in the United States doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to put it on the New York Times bestseller list or as the number one New York Times bestseller. And you can have a book that literally sells just a few hundred copies that the New York Times will add to their list because they like the topic or they think it's timely or even because of politics. So short version of a story, uh, Bill O'Reilly's talked about this. You could probably Google 
or YouTube, uh, Bill O'Reilly and New York Times, and you'll find the segments that he's done on this. But, um, you know, his book, uh, Killing Patton, was the number one nonfiction book in the United States last year, a uh, hard copy, sold like 1.2 million hard copies. And yet, for most of the year, or at least half of the year, he wasn't even on the New York Times bestseller list, and he was ticked about that. And, uh, and you know, basically, he came out talking about how the New York Times is not doing uh, a pure algorithm for book sales. So we focus on Amazon because that's really the only thing that we can sort of control, and that is when we help a client launch a book or when one of our clients go through our launch process, then through that launch process, they're going to become a bestseller on Amazon because Amazon's going to count the downloads and or physical sales of that book. So long answer for a short question, but what makes one a bestseller is that however that list is curated in Amazon's case, it's curated just based on downloads and sales, which that really is the purest way to determine if someone is a bestseller or not. So hopefully that makes, makes good sense there. Uh, another question, Shirley, it looks like, uh, how long should I advertise that the book is still 99 cents and when will the price change? So um, right now, I mean, we've already gone through your launch. So if you like, you can change the digital version of the book to any price that you want. We recommend $2.99 all the way up to, say, $9.99. Uh, those are good numbers for a digital book. Uh, and you can feel comfortable, you know, keeping it at that number you know, anywhere in between those numbers. So no reason for you to keep it at 99 cents any longer unless you're doing your own kind of special promotion to get reviews. So I think you're good. Go ahead and change it. Once your launch is done, put it at 299 to 999 and let's rock and roll with it. So good. Uh, let's see here. Awesome. Thank you, Lou. Appreciate it, brother. Uh, Yuki, hello. I can hear. I can't hear anyone speaking. So I muted everyone, uh, Yuki, except um, I've unmuted a couple of people that we asked the question. So um, yeah, so no one's talking right now except for me. <laughs> um, but if you have a question, please type it in the question box now because I want to answer your questions. We have been going like close to 50 minutes, so we have time for maybe one or two more questions if you guys have any. And uh, let's see, um, Shirley saying Megan Kelly's book is everywhere. It is everywhere, isn't it? Uh, certainly her book is a bestseller uh, and is cranking. And, you know, who knows what the New York Times will do with it. Megan's been more liberal lately, so they may embrace her and love her and, uh, and give her a lot of love. I mean, look, politics plays a role uh, on these, uh, with these newspapers. So nothing wrong with, with playing your political affiliation to, uh, to get some promotion. Uh, Ed says, thanks for the input. You are very welcome, my friend. I hope this was helpful. By the way, awesome questions today, uh, you know, and great feedback. And I love the success that I'm already seeing with, with a bunch of you and want to congratulate you all on that. So uh, I don't, I'm not seeing any other questions. If you have another question, then please type it in the chat box. If not, I'll give it like 10 more seconds and I'll go ahead and shut it off. Uh, I will ask our team to take care of Ed, you were asking about uh, KTLA, um, and we were going to put something in the box about um, how you search da downloads, which that was you, Shirley, and also we're going to be doing some research on KDP or Amazon advertising. So all that looks good. Uh, let's see here. There are a couple of questions that just popped through. So Jessica's asking, is there a way to find top travel blogs online besides a Google search? So yes, there is. Um, and I don't know if in, um, BSP university, we have a list of top blogs. Um, I'll check on that because we use a software called Cision. We spend $5,000 a year on Cision. And Cision um, helps people to, it helps publicity agents like us to get every single name, telephone, email address, contact information for blogs, podcasts, radio producers, television producers, etc. I don't know if we list top blogs, and I don't know the best way to do that. But I will double check on that for you. 
and I'll get some love for you. Do me a favor, uh, if you would, um, go ahead and post in the Facebook group your question too, and that way we can you know, remember to answer it. So post in the Facebook group your question, and we'll make sure to answer it. And I'll, and by the way, any questions that you guys have that aren't on a Tuesday at noon, post in the group and let us dive in and, and help you with those things as well. So, um, so I'll check on that for you, Jessica. Uh, Dr. Val, thank you, Rob. You are very welcome. Uh, yep, uh, Paul, I'll, I'll take care of that. Just call into our office too, and you can, um, we can work on that for you. I'll get that for you. Jeff says, good stuff. Hey, Jeff, how are you, brother? Congrats on all your success and all the cool things you're doing. Let's see. Uh, Shmina says, I have a question for a cookbook. Do you recommend that I launch it in the spring? No. No, we launched. Um, let me go grab it. We launched um, Mia's cookbook. Uh, it's awesome. This is actually the hardcover version of it, which, uh, man, it is just beautiful. Uh, but we launched this just a few months ago, and it was a massive success, a massive bestseller. And in fact, she did a Kickstarter campaign and raised $63,000 selling this book and, and other, um, you know, things that connect with it. So you can wait if you like, but if you're ready to go with your cookbook now, no reason to wait. Launch it. Rock it. Uh, there's, you know, there's, there's no uh, season for food. <laughs> I mean, there's seasons for different kinds of food, but I wouldn't wait. Uh, Jessica th says, thanks, we will do. Uh, Jeff says, doing great. Um, Vanessa, thanks for everything. You are so welcome, everybody. Uh, Gotta go, Skylar says. Have a good holiday. You too. Uh, Shamina says, okay, thanks. Good. So I don't see any other questions. Uh, thanks so much for everybody being on. We got, you know, a lot of great questions answered today, a lot of great content. All of this is being recorded. God willing, I did it, the right thing and, and recorded it correctly. <laughs> and uh, we'll post it in the back office uh, in the next just couple of days. So thanks so much, everybody. Uh, thanks for being uh, with us at uh, Bestseller You, and we will see you next Tuesday. Take care.